Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna clean up the suspension arms, the rear trailing arms, and the rear subframe. I have them soaking right now. I just sprayed them down with Purple Power. I'm gonna use the steamer. It's a McCall, uh, I think that's how you say it, McCall Co. Uh, deluxe steamer. I'm gonna use that. Hopefully be able to get these things the factory finish looks good on them and I want to run with that. Normally I'd probably paint them or something like that, but we're going to clean them up. They're, they're quite dirty right now, but there's no rust, no corrosion. So we will clean them up and see how it goes. The nice thing about the steamer is it makes like all the grime and stuff just kind of wipes right off. It, it really makes it nice to clean these up. You don't have to scrub super hard. You just kind of wipe it to get rid of all the grime that was on these. And that's, I mean, the finish on them was pretty good. But if you look on the back side, if you can see, they're uh, pretty grimy inside, but when you clean them up, yeah, they have the factory undercoating and stuff on them, but I think that's kind of cool and that's the look I really want to go with with this car is like an OEM plus. So, and restoration, if they were all pitted and rusty, I would paint them in a heartbeat. But like I said, these things are in surprisingly really good shape. It'd be a shame. I'd actually probably buy another set before I would strip these down just because you rarely find them with the factory finish this clean. So keep cleaning them up. Hopefully they come as clean as I want. It's going to take a while, but I think the, the end result will be worth it. So change of plans. I think I'm going to paint them. The more I look at them, I don't think they're gonna come clean enough. And I just don't wanna be disappointed. I normally do paint them. I wanted to try this with this car because I thought they'd come clean enough, but I don't know. The more I mess with them, the more it looks like they won't. I might sit on it for a minute and see, here I'll show you a better view. So they come pretty clean and then the factory finish is beautiful. And then that's all, this is just undercoat so it's not gonna come like super, super clean. But So you just see, I mean, it's just not, I thought it'd come shinier and it isn't. And then, the subframe looks really good and it's got all the factory markings on it. I'm pro, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. I might just leave that because that actually did come really clean and I think it looks cool. I don't know, maybe I might leave these. They did come pretty clean. The backs are still kind of messed up. That's just like, When they're wet, they look good, but the second they dry... Maybe I might mess with them a little bit more. Save me a lot of time if I didn't have to strip them and paint them, but... We'll see. I really want this car to be nice. And... I just... I like the originality of it, though. Like, when you see the paint marks. We can just replicate all that. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll strip them and play around with some more. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna beat the studs out of that hub because I have I'll just 
Let's bring you guys with and show you. Here's one of the front hubs that I finished already, our knuckles. Sandblasted, painted black, just like a chassis black. Just probably what I want to do with those pieces, just so they're nice. The reason I'm thinking about doing it with those is just for long term like keeping the car clean and stuff underneath it'd be really easy to keep clean if it's all like uniform like this fresh black coating we'll see but anyway i had to order a new hub a lot of this stuff i had just sitting in my basement from uh, my race car stuff like spare hubs and stuff so i actually like have like full sets of knuckles too so this is a set that's ready to go in it's got a new ball joint all painted real nice new studs wheel bearing hub so then we're going to see if these fit in those hubs so let's try that real quick uh oh make sure you guys are centered here so you can see me beating the hell out of me Moment of truth. One of these packs is open. Yep, they're gonna fit. So, they'll fit in these factory rear hubs. Sorry, my camera decided it wanted to stop because of a limit again. So put these in, I'll show you the tool I put them in with. The tool I put them in with is this I forget who it's made by. I don't know. But it's a pretty much a bearing and a washer. And then it's got the concave or recess for the lug. And then I have a couple washers because sometimes it takes some washers to do it for the extended studs. Pull them all the way through. And then I have just an old chromoly steel lug nut. Pulls it through, there you go. So we'll get these installed, at least we accomplish something, and go from there. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep on it before I rip them all apart and start sandblasting it. But I kinda like the factory look. And that's like the whole purpose of this car was to be like an OEM plus, like if I, bought the car back when I got my license when this was a very important car to me and put all the parts on it. Put a Type R motor and I mean yes at my motor I did do everything I could to make it perfect but this isn't about it not being perfect it's more about I want the feel of like not a custom. Uh, this isn't going to be a custom car. I just wanted it to be like super, super clean factory stuff and look like the car came with a Type R motor. So we'll see. But first, I'm going to do this. I might pop the races out of these. I know you're not really supposed to, but I've always done it on my race car and never had an issue with it. I usually pop for rear wheel bearings. I usually pop these races out. These are really loose. And then clean out all the bearings and then repack it with Amsoil grease. So I'm gonna knock the rest of these out, grab some gloves, knock the rest of these out, and put some in and kind of show you. I'll show you guys the process of putting them in, but I just hit them out with a hammer. It's the easiest way for me. All right, so now, gotta work bench, but now, but we're gonna work off the chair. Ah. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna work off the workbench, because that's why I bought it. All right, set this up. Point you guys downward, maybe that'll work. Front one. 
So, I don't really know if you're... Oh, man. I wish I guess I could have pointed this a little better. I'm not really sure if you're supposed to do it this way, but I always do. So there's one race. There's another. Then if you look, bearing. So real quick, I'm gonna grab some brake clean, flush these out. Usually just grab an old rag, start digging out all the old nasty grease with my fingers. You can get most of it out with your finger and then a rag, grab a box of shop rags. Q-tips work really well too. I usually, I used to use Q-tips. Probably currently don't have any out here though, so and I don't wanna. Go all the way back in the house to get them. I mean, you don't have to get it perfect. I just try to get most of the old stuff out of there. These ones are actually sealed pretty well. This hub's a little different, I think, with the um, with the drum rear, usually I'm used to the disc ones, and these cages in this thing are huge, I don't know if you can see them, but the cages don't really have that much gap in them, but yeah, see, get out all the old shit. Like I said, a Q-tip works really well if you want to get one. Go back to flooding it with some brake clean. I've never had an issue with this. A lot of people say that they're non-serviceable, but I've serviced them many times. And I mean, I do it, I used to do it once pretty much, once or twice a season, depending on how many hours I had on track. So, all nice and clean. And then I'm gonna wipe down the races a little bit. Get all the old nasty stuff off those. And Amsoil is just my go-to. Um, you can use whatever you want. Sort of the factory NTNs, at least. I just like the Amsoil stuff. I've always had great luck with their oil and stuff when I when I raced and tracked. So I continue to use it. I'll show you what I stuff I use is Amsoil Dominator. They're racing synthetic, just a clear grease. So what I'll do is I'll make sure my gloves are decently clean, some residue on them. Then I will take Defender's grease and just kind of pack the bearings until it's gone. Grab another bit. And then in the center, there's like a valley that I try to fill. That's where, you'll notice when you take them apart where the grease was, just try to get it back in there the best you can. They do have special tools and stuff to pack grease for like bearings when they're out, but I haven't seen anything, correct me if I'm wrong, seen anything to pack them 
when they're in the hub. Like I said, I'm no expert on this at all, but I used to do this religiously with my race car, uh, my Integra, and I never had an issue, uh, never had a hub failure. I ran rear hubs for two seasons, and my seasons are were usually one track event a month at least. Um, or one race weekend a month and that was I mean throughout from March on so I mean I, I did have a lot of heavy track time so now so we're in so then you just grab the races put a little bit of grease on those Then you gotta tap them in. So, wipe my hands off first, and then I'll just use the butt end of the hammer. And I'll move you guys back over here so you can see. And then I'll just use the butt end of the hammer or whatever you want. You can hear it seed in there. And there's it from the back side. All right, same thing. Take a little bit of grease. Sometimes you can pop them in by hand like that. And wipe the excess. The excess on the inside and then I will tell you this so the first event you'll go to um, or the first time you drive it a couple times it will come out it will so when let me grab it real quick get this off the floor when you put it your washer on there and your axle nut. So like my first race weekend after I would do this, there'd be grease in here. Uh, and that's just the extra coming out. Uh, and I never saw a big deal with it, just from the heat and the temp and stuff. But like I said, you can do this if you want. I've always done it. I, I never had an issue with failures. And I'm reusing these. These are, they look pretty nice and pretty new. Like they, they were on the Civic. So I'm not gonna replace them. They're, uh, I'm just gonna do this and put new studs in them and they should be good. Now the front ones are all new, but I had those laying around. So this, put this guy in there, like that. Put your tool on there. Put your lug nut on there. Just use a spare lug nut because it could ruin the lug nut. Grab big boy impact. Slowly cinch it up. Why is that not working the way I want it to? That's why you have to use washers because it gets to a certain point and then once it stops because the lug nut these lug nuts bottom out I forgot about that so that makes sense why I had all these washers in the pack so I put those washers under there to lift this up now I should be able to drive her home so tightens up oh jeez yeah you gotta have a Good handle on it. Let me uh, just go right here. Those impacts got Okay, so you'll hear it stop. Then put it in reverse. Ow. Don't break your fingers, kids. 
Ow, that really hurt. And the award for smartest of the day goes to me. And now my stud's installed. I've broken these before. Well, I haven't installed them right. But, all right, let's do these other ones. Grab some actual gloves so I don't break my fingers off. Okay, back, sorry. So, stud in, insert washers, back a little, tool, lug nut, and then just watch it. It makes a different noise when it's all the way, but like I said, I've, I've broke them before because I didn't hear the other noise over the air impact and next thing you know, I got a stud in my hand that got broke. And you can see that they do seed all the way. Just make sure they do. Put it on the ground afterwards and see if all the studs are the same length. However you want to do it. Can hear the difference there. I don't know if you can see very well. I'm kind of just winging this video. Just to make a video of it. Kind of take you guys along the process. The slow process. But it's getting there. It's a little easier to put these on once you get a couple lugs on, or studs in. So you got something to grab onto. So you grab the stud, pop it against the leg. And you heard that, that was, that was it, that's all she wrote. Throw this back up there on the table. Once again, I have a workbench and I'm not using it. Sweet. Okay. And we're done. Actually, you can see something actually how these will look. Pretty cool on something. So, let me run and go get it because I don't know if you guys have seen it yet and we'll see how they look with the outer part that's going on there, which is kind of a little special. So I'll talk more about that in a second. All right, so you guys ready for it? Here it is. Bam. These are factory Honda aluminum drum covers. And this is why I'm staying rear drum. And then behind it are the new coilovers. I did a trade with a buddy. Originally I was going to put my feels on the car, but I figured they'd be too stiff. So he's gonna race Honda Challenge. So we did a swap and I got these, which I really like, feel like are gonna bling bling on the car. So I was really excited about that. And then these as well. Everybody does rear disc brake conversion. Everybody was like, oh, why aren't you gonna do brakes? Why aren't you gonna do rear disc? Why are you gonna stay um, with drums? Well, that's why. I just, everybody goes disc. Everybody, it looks the same. Those under the wheels look cool in my opinion. I just, they're old school. I saw them on a buddy's race car, and he's the only one I've ever seen run them, and I fell in love with him. I had to have a set, so I found a new unbox set from Honda, and they look cool. They're gonna serve a purpose. These cars don't need rear disc. I mean, it's nice to have for 
ease of use, but the car will do just fine. ITR front calipers. Maybe I'll do a caliper upgrade in the front. I don't know. I, I kind of want to do the ITR. I kind of want to keep it simple. Spoons always look good, but I feel like they take away from the wheel a little bit. And like I said, I just want to do it kind of period correct, early 2000s, and people were running the ITR stuff. So, all right, well, that's it. I did make a decision, I think. I'm gonna paint them. So I'm gonna paint these, I'm gonna strip them, paint them. I don't know about that yet. It looks so cool with all the factory markings. Tell me what you guys think. I don't really know. Hopefully, next couple days I'll have an update for you with them painted. We can see how they look and go from there. So, all right. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe. Subscribe. Like and subscribe.